So welcome to ArgoCon. Finally, if you travel far away, you made it. Made it on time, actually. I was, I was so worried about missing and not being on time here because I, was, I came a week earlier. So if you saw, saw my tweets, I've been here for a week. Um, so my name is Carlos Santana. I'm a solutions uh, architect for AWS. Um, one of the program chairs along with Christian and Dan. Uh, I don't see Dan here, but um, I, he's uh, around here. Uh, they will be taking pictures, doing the social media. So if you're a speaker, uh, you will get your money shots uh, by Christian or Dan. Um, so we want to welcome you to ArgoCon, and um, I'm very surprised that a lot of people choose ArgoCon. There's many good uh, co-located events, so you chose correctly. Uh, we have to ship someday, right? So we have to ship to production. Uh, with that started, captions and uh, translations are available through the Worldly app. We always do it in, in KubeCon. You, take, you can take a, a QR code. And as always, um, uh, we follow the code of conduct of the CNCF. This is the CNCF project, and um, you can find the, everything uh, associated with that, uh, including reporting events. Hopefully nothing happens around here. Everybody will be kind to each other. And the next thing is uh, just a recap of what we've been doing with uh, Argo during the year, and then almost this year, there's been many uh, seminars and webinars uh, happening, but the last ArgoCon in Chicago was a very successful event. I tried to take uh, pictures of all the uh, fun stuff happening there. Also, a lot of people make a lot of connections there. We can see Dan fighting with the Star Wars uh, lightsaber there. So if you were there, I, I bet you had a lot of fun and you're going to have fun also learning um, in, that, in this ArgoCon. And what I want to say is Argo is a community uh, project, CNCF graduated project, but the important thing is the amazing number of users that are using Argo, uh, the different projects, Argo workflows, Argo events. Um, and and the, what makes special this community is the amount of people that are, are users and then seeing some of those users becoming maintainers. Um, and then we'll be having some uh, updates today about maintainers and celebrating celebrating you becoming a maintainer or a contributor of Argo starting as a user because that's what we see in the community and in terms of Argo we took some dev stats and uh, the project have been growing uh, for the last year uh, it's about eight eight thousand commits uh, 14k PR so uh, these numbers are continually increasing, and it's the third largest uh, project in the CNCF uh, by the number of, of authors. And with that, we have Alan and Michael do our updates for um, the Argo project, so I'll leave it to them. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alan Kukas. I'm one of the Argo maintainers, um, and I'm a software engineer at Pipekit. I'm going to give you some updates on various aspects of Argo, especially workflows, events, and the Helm project. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome all the new members of the Argo project. Um, all of these people have joined within the last year, and um, well done to all of them. Um, if you participate in any way, as Carlos said, you start off as a user, you start answering questions in Slack, you start doing issues, you start doing pull requests, um, you, can, you too can become a, a member of the Argo project. There's a QR code in the bottom right hand corner that links to the URL at the bottom that gives um, details of what you need to do to do that and the, the requirements. To become a member is just about participating and um, hopefully some of you out there will decide you'd like to embark on this journey. That URL also um, contains details of how to be promoted within the project to become a maintainer. Um, and here's a list of all the people who've been promoted within the last year. Um, let's, big thank you to all of them. <laughs> Special shout out to Terry uh, Van Tang, who's become the workflows lead, and Zach Aller, who's down there, <laughs> who's become the rollouts lead. Um, I'm not gonna read out everybody else's name. So, um, and we've also had a project promoted um, to become a full member of, of the Argo ecosystem. Argo Helm was promoted in 2023. 
um, uh, to become a full part. Everybody was using Argo Helm, and now um, it's sort of properly in the ecosystem. And all of the people below um, are, have, have become maintainers as part of that. All their efforts have, have gone into making that a successful project. So thank you to all of them as well. Um, Argo Helm has been working on uh, reducing the overheads of uh, the updates it needs to do. Um, so they've used, they're using uh, the Renovate project to automate um, the pull requests for changes to things upstream. So when Argo CD releases a new version, the Helm charts will hopefully follow quite quickly behind that. They've set a target of three business days, and they're currently succeeding on that target. Um, and so the uh, next steps are to introduce more Renovate for um, things like Dex and Redis, which are used within the, the charts, and um, introducing webhook so that um, we get an immediate PR for any upstream releases. Um, this frees up the maintainers to do more work on other useful things. Um, Argo Events was released. Uh, this has got some new event sources, SFTP and uh, the Gerrit Gitforge um, system can now provide events into Argo Events and you can trigger email directly out of Argo Events now. Uh, some changes to Nats Jetstream to allow um, smaller versions of Jetstream to run or to use a, a shared Jetstream event bus between instances and um, Final thing for it, um, that was uh, templates, which now support all Spruce functions. Moving on to workflows, the workflows documentation has moved on to read the docs. Um, Argo CD's documentation has been there for a while, and this allows us to get around one of the biggest problems we've had with documentation, which is that we had to refer back to historic versions of workflows and it made reading the documentation to work out what you needed to do quite hard. So now you've got version documentation. It only goes back as, version, as far as version 3.4, which is the oldest maintained version of workflows. Um, and hopefully all current locations that you may have bookmarked will redirect to the new Read the Docs documentation. Um, some other improvements that have been merged into uh, the code base. Um, we've got some pod management fixes that should improve reliability in the event of nodes disappearing. Um, we've got some cron workflow improvements um, that allow you to stop scheduling a cron job. Um, if certain if criteria are met, perhaps you're getting a lot of failures on a cron job, you don't want it to keep scheduling more. Um, and you can also specify multiple cron schedules in a single cron workflow to allow much more complex scheduling scenarios. Um, there's been a lot of Upstream, it's sort of um, UI code quality improvements, um, trying to improve uh, the maintainability and um, modernizing how that system is working. Um, a lot of PRs listed on the screen if you want to find out any more details about this. Um, Workflow has also been improving supply chain security, trying to uh, improve our scores on various metrics there. Um, and the development environment now supports code spaces, GitHub code spaces. We've, all, we've had um, uh, dev container support for a while, but code spaces were being problematic with that. So if you would like to start contributing to workflows, you should be able to spin up a GitHub code space to build the code and carry on from there, hopefully. Uh, we've got some things in development. We've got a, um, a couple of high priority problems. Um, 3.5 merged the archive and live workflows list, um, and there's been some regressions in performance, particularly there, um, and that's still not fixed. That's um, in progress, and uh, there is a situation where the controller will spam a lot of log lines about invalid, invalid config maps, um, which we're hoping to fix with some informers. Uh, some new features, these are not promised. There's no schedule for when these might arrive. Um, multiple semaphores in a single node. Um, some metrics enhancements, including open telemetry and improving the metrics to answer some questions that people want to be able to answer with the current metrics but can't. Um, some concurrency control. Uh, things like cron jobs and cron workflows, you can say 
you forbid multiple instances of them running. Um, you can't do that directly with workflows. You, you can work around it, but there's no built-in support for that. We'd like to add that. And the fairly perennial problem of making the controller horizontally scalable is at least getting some discussions going around it. Um, and finally, I'd like to talk about uh, the sustainability project. Um, Julie Vogelman's been spearheading a project to get contributions merged quicker. Um, this uh, involves signing up to a, a sort of a bit of a commitment, your time to write PRs, and then the maintainers will, and the other people within the sustainability project um, will try and get those merged and uh, within a, a quicker time frame than perhaps otherwise as a sort of a payback for that. And um, if you are interested in that, there's a QR code and a URL at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'll hand over to Michael now. Sweet. All right. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm Michael Crenshaw. Uh, I'm at Intuit on our Argo CD team. And I'm also uh, an Argo CD maintainer. Um, and just going to talk about briefly what's going on in the Argo CD and the Argo rollouts world recently. So with Argo CD, a ton has happened in the last year, so I kind of had to narrow it down to themes. Uh, and I think the biggest theme for Argo CD has been scalability in a number of respects. So we're at the point where big companies are using Argo CD in a big, big way, and that comes with, of course, pain points and things that we need to improve about uh, core Argo CD functionality. Um, so some folks have spearheaded the effort by introducing SIG Scalability. Uh, it's a group that meets regularly just to talk about the problems we're facing. Um, if you are encountering, encountering any performance issues uh, and just want to chat, that's a great place to drop in and let us know what your problems are. And we've done some deep dives, like we've got a, a Slack thread with 400 replies on it on one performance issue. So we will go deep if we need to. Uh, out of that, um, Amazon has done some awesome work uh, doing analyses of how controller sharding works in Argo CD. So horizontal scaling, uh, spinning up multiple pods to do continuous reconciliation. They've developed algorithms that improve how we spread that workload across multiple pods. And you can now opt into different algorithms that will uh, improve performance in your environment. And we've got statistics that show how well those work for different setups. Um, Self-service multi-tenancy, apps in any namespace is a system that allows your developers to control some aspects of Argo CD configuration without needing to go to your team, like your DevOps team as a bottleneck. Uh, so that has just reached like um, stable maturity in Argo CD. And we've also introduced the ability to self-serve notifications configuration. So if your developers want to uh, set up their own page or duty account, they can do that. And then finally, application set is kind of its own category. There have been way too many performance and scaling improvements there to list, uh, but application set has really matured and I've been very happy with the progress there. So that's Argo CD, we've been scaling it. Um, Argo rollouts, we've been scaling, but kind of in a different way. We're scaling the community. Um, so plugins have been a huge part of the drive in the last year. Metrics providers, we've got two plugins. Uh, traffic routers, we've got six. The, one of the most satisfying things about that effort has been the ability to get your contributions in more quickly. Uh, folks have been able to contribute these plugins without needing to wait for the core Argo team to review every line of it. Uh, and it just helps folks get unblocked and get onto progressive delivery more quickly. Um, soon, steps themselves will have the ability to be run as plugins. So whatever arbitrary activity you need for your organization to happen as part of an Argo rollouts progressive delivery setup, you can implement that yourself uh, and incorporate it into your organization. The second part, second theme for Argo rollouts has been the user experience. There's been an entire refresh of the user interface. And these bullet points are small in words, but they're really big in impact. The new analysis run UI is brilliant looking. I'm not an Argo rollouts expert. I'm on the CD side, but I can now go into the UI and see exactly how an analysis of the metrics for an application behaved. It's really helped me with Intuit's developers who come and they say, uh, my CPU utilization was too high. 
I can pop into that UI to see exactly what the spikes look like and direct the users to um, help overcome that issue for themselves. This, uh, so this slide absolutely blows me away. Um, I love to get the statistic. It is how many contributions are we getting that aren't made by maintainers? The number of maintainer contributions just kind of slowly ticks up over time. That's not what we've seen with non-maintainers. This is folks uh, adding issues, commenting on issues, opening PRs. It's gone 5x in the last year in Argo CD, 20x in Argo rollouts, which just shows how many people are really starting to dive in. Uh, you know, you've got Argo installed. This is reflective of how many people have it installed and they're finding ways to push it to its limits and come to us and ask for new features and improvements and fixes. So thank you all for these numbers. This has been absolutely amazing in the last year. Uh, and then finally, with that explosion in growth in um, folks contributing who aren't currently maintainers, we have to scale how we maintain these projects. And we've made major improvements. We now have what we're calling scoped approvers, which means if you just want to contribute docs changes or just CI changes, that's sort of your wheelhouse, we have the ability to move you up the ladder in the Argo Proj governance uh, and get you access to actually merge PRs and get things unblocked. So if you're interested in being a maintainer, it's become significantly easier in the last year. Uh, it's allowed people who um, don't necessarily want to write code to become maintainers. This coming year, we plan to uh, make a more robust system for folks who aren't writing PRs to contribute to Argo Proj as well. So look out for that. And finally, we want you all to be contributors. If you're sitting in this room, if you're excited about Argo, you are qualified to be an Argo contributor. Uh, talk to us, open the QR codes pointing to our membership documentation, um, and just get involved. That's it for me. Pass it back to Carlos. Yeah, I, wanted, I was going to add something around this and since we have time. Um, who's a uh, contributor to Argo? Raise your hand. Have you like go through the process of submitting a PR? Maintainers and contributors, raise your hand. This is an exercise. There should be more people here that have contributed to Argo. Raise it. So the idea is for the other folks to see who have their hand raised this week, take advantage. Take advantage of those folks and ask them like, how do I contribute to CNCF? Um, and that's a way that you can like accelerate this. And like Michael said, um, scope approvers, not every CNCF project has this system. So if you want to contribute to CNCF, you can do it through Argo and take advantage of this system where you are concentrated in a piece of an area of Argo and, and be a maintainer. So that's something innovative that not, not all CNCF projects are doing. So take advantage of being here this week and just network, right? That's part also of KubeCon, networking of like, I work on my company, I work on platforms, I work on GitOps, I work on automation. How can I get involved in, in open source? How can I contribute to open source? Either testing, opening PRs, opening issues, saying that you're interested in this feature. Some people just put a thumbs up, but if you can write something around the lines like, oh, we need this at our company because X, Y, and Z, that's important, that's a contribution. Like it gets counted when we do the dev stats, right? In CNCF, we count everything, every activity in GitHub as a, um, a, a contribution. So when you, when you see the numbers, it's not just like a line of code, it's everything involving uh, GitHub um, activities. And Slack is like insanely good, right? Everybody's there, everybody pitched in uh, to help you out. So you can also help other people if you are a heavy user of Argo workflows or CD or rollouts, uh, you can help others. And that's, that's becoming uh, a maintainer, a contributor, becoming one community. So with that, uh, we want to thank our, sp our sponsors. Uh, Diamond sponsor is Acuity. Uh, they have a, a booth, check them out. Another Diamond sponsor is uh, CoFresh. Also they have a, a booth. So all the booths are located in, uh, on my left side. And we also want to con um, thank uh, our Platinum and Gold sponsors, Harness, Red Hat, and Intuit uh, for sponsoring uh, ArgoCon. And, uh, with these sponsorships, uh, we're able to run this, this conference. Um, and the recordings, all the recordings will be available 
uh, post conference and that's available through our sponsor through cloud uh, geometry. And uh, for folks that are maybe the first time in, in Argo, um, in KubeCon, we, have, we use the sketch um, system for seeing the schedule. We have two tracks. Uh, this room is NO3, we have NO4. So it'll be a dual, dual track ArgoCon. So you can like move around on which talks you want to, to do. We tried our best to keep uh, sessions that are related together so you don't have to move uh, that much around. So that's the reason that's there. Give us feedback to the program chairs, me, uh, Dan, or Christian. And you can also rate the talks and the slides will be available in the same system. And if you have a um, mobile phone, there's, a, there's, a, there's an app. Uh, and, and the schedule, there's two schedules for the co-located event and also for the main event that starts tomorrow. So that's the QR code. Uh, just uh, housekeeping stuff, lunch uh, will be around uh, in this section uh, in front of E and S. Um, and what is it? Uh, I think that's it. And the reception uh, will be in 7.1 downstairs at the end after the last talk of ArgoCon. Um, this, they say, this is a message from KubeCon. Um, they said there's the signs for networking and putting signs on tables. I think that's outside. It's not here, uh, but I saw them out there. And then that's it, right? We're on time. We didn't practice. So welcome to ArgoCon. Let's go.